Hey, so I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight's main event from TNA Genesis Part 2 between Sting and Magnus for the TNA World title and for Sting's career. Let's be honest here, guys. You did not have to read the spoiler to know what was going to happen. You knew going into this match that Magnus was going to go and retain his title the way he did. On the count that TNA has been booking Magnus to be this pussy champion that can't get anything done on his own. He needs help of, from others to win his matches and to retain his title. The one thing that I'll give TNA credit, all right, is that in this match, there was some exchange between both Sting and Magnus early on in the match, and later on, the interference began. You had the bad influence, you had the bromance, you had EC3, Rockstar Spud, interfere in Magnus's favor and start beating up Sting. Samoa Joe, who was at ringside, tried to help out, but to no avail. And then you had Kurt Angle come out and try to help out but still, there was a whole chaos outside of the ring. And it seemed like Sting was actually going to get the job done. He had Magnus in the Scorpion Deathlock. Magnus was tapping out, but there was no referee. All right? It put things even more crazy. This match was a no DQ. All right? So then you had Bobby Roode come out and elbow Sting in the back of the head to cause Magnus with his finisher. And Dixie Carter brings out Earl Hebner. She's grabbing him by the shirt telling him to get in the ring and do the count. Earl Hebner didn't want to do it, and he eventually he did, and that how, that's how Magnus won, okay? And at the end of the match, Magnus rips Sting's contract, and that's how the show ends. I will say this, okay? A lot of people are saying that, oh, Sting will head over to WWE, be at WrestleMania, wrestle The Undertaker, and then be put in the Hall of Fame, okay? Here's how I look at it, okay? I personally don't see Sting going to WWE, and here's why. If you can describe Sting in one word, that one word is loyalty. When he was in WCW, he was loyal to WCW. Even though in that time, WWE was offering him a contract, he chose not to go. When WCW went out of business and WWE offered him a contract again for millions of dollars, Sting said no. Even if you watch that video on YouTube where Sting said, the reason why he didn't go because he didn't trust how WWE would use him. But you knew going into that, that Sting's loyalty, his heart was still with WCW. All right. And now, fast forward years later, back in 06, Sting joined TNA again. And he's been there for almost eight years. And every time his contract expires with TNA, this talk always happens for him in WrestleMania. All right. But again, I do feel that he has a loyalty to TNA. All right, even though, yes, it may seem like, you know, he's there for no reason. It may seem that, you know, he looks miserable wrestling in small venues like a high school gym. He has a loyalty to TNA, which may sound silly, but it's the truth. So I don't see him going to WWE. What I think will happen is that whoever is this new investor will eventually rehire Sting storyline wise and he'll be back. People have been saying that, oh, Sting will be this new investor. I really doubt it. It wouldn't make sense. All right, you lose a match, you're fired, and then all of a sudden you reveal yourself as this new investor and you rehire yourself. Wouldn't make sense. I think what's going to happen, Jeff Jarrett will be this new investor. All right? And you see this whole storyline between Dixie Carter and Jeff Jarrett for the Battle of TNA. That's a company. Okay, that's my thoughts on this, of course. I may be wrong. But I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on all of this? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Drop your comments down below. No one is wrong as always. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And I will catch you later in the next video. I'm out. Peace. I know I look funny with this hat, but it's cold as fuck here on the East Coast.